So if you're doing this for yourself, just know that you have to do this very, very early is getting your manager's buy-in and being like, hey, I am going to quit or I'm going to go remote. Do you support me? And then obviously you have to come up with a plan. I'm going to tell you how to come up with your plan right now. That is a key element to the story. So as of this time in this story, Jen's not sure how far up the chain this thing is going to have to go. And that's what I was talking about before. It might go to her boss's boss, Jen's manager's boss, or it might go up, 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 up because the back to the office mandate on May 1st is straight from the CEO, like straight from his office. And Jen is buried by about five layers of the CEO or the C-suite guys. So she's freaking out thinking that this thing might have to go all the way up to the top because everyone else is back to the office except for her. But anyway, getting your immediate manager's buy-in is critical. And like I said, her proposal had to be in writing. She wasn't actually presenting her case like how I did, which in a lot of ways is a lot more nerve wracking, I think, because you don't have any control over how to sell it or how to pitch it. What ended up happening, I'm skipping around in the story a little bit just so that you have the full idea of what happened and I'm filling in the gaps here and there. But what happened is that her boss, her manager, had to present the proposal to the decision makers and then that decision maker wasn't actually the decision maker and that person had to send up that proposal to their boss. So it didn't get up to the CEC suite level, but it did get right below them. Jen is one layer manager, the manager's boss, and so it was like four layers right before the C level guys. It really did go up all the way up the chain. And so it was a little nerve wracking for her being like, wow, I can't even present my case. I can't even fight my case. I can't present my argument in a way that I would present my argument. The only thing that I can do is write a well-crafted memo and make sure that my argument is really clear on this thing. And that's where we're at in the story. We have to write a memo and we have to write a proposal of what is this going to look like and why would they do this? Because they literally just said everybody back to the office. So a couple of weeks go by, she is drafting up her document. She's drafting up her proposal and she's like, Hey, can I put a meeting on your schedule? And can we go over this? I'm like, sure, that's fine. She sends me over the document for me to read before our meeting. It's her proposal. And when she gives me this document, I'm just going to be very honest. It was very bad. I didn't tell her like that, but I did tell her that I wouldn't approve it if I were in charge. If I were in charge and I was the decision maker and she gave me that document, she gave me that proposal, I would have been like, no, absolutely not. This is ridiculous. The document that she gave me was similar to a resume. Just to explain it to you really quickly about like what this looked like and why it was bad. It had the proposal at the top, kind of similar to a summary statement or an objective statement on a resume. Like, I want to get this job because I am a professional in this industry because of all of my experience and all the things that I did. So very similar. Instead of that objective statement or summary statement, it was just a proposal. I am moving to this island and I need to go remote as of this date and here's why. So there was the proposal at the top and a few bullet points of the stats she did while she was at the company, kind of similar to your job history. And then at the end, there was an essay at the bottom, an essay of why she thought that she deserved to go remote. And I'll go over each section really quickly about why it was bad and what it looked like just so that you can avoid these same mistakes. The proposal was actually very good. The proposal literally just said, this is what I'm doing and this is what I'm doing it by. This is what I propose. Perfect. Awesome. The bullet points was really terrible because yes, she had statistics, which we suggest everybody do for pretty much any document, especially when you're trying to sell people. Like your resume should have a bunch of different bullet points on there that have a bunch of statistics like raised revenue by 6% whatever, whatever, whatever. 
she had all of these types of things. Remember her job. Her job is a recruiter. She put in all these people that she onboarded and that was good, like 50 whatever people that she onboarded, hundreds of applications she goes through. That was all good and that's fine. She started to talk about how she knows the company culture so well, how she's so ingrained in it and how she can filter people out for company culture and things like that. And then she's mentioned something about an internship program. It was all convoluted. There was like seven different points that she was trying to make and all these bullet points. And then I wasn't clear about what her argument is. Like, what is your unique value to this company? And why should I let you go remote? I mean, I'm just thinking like, as the boss. And then at the essay at the bottom was absolutely terrible because of the way that it was written. It was one, it was way too long. The essay was like seven paragraphs and each paragraph was a block of text like this freaking big. And you just looked at it and you're like, I'm not going to read this. Like, I'm just not going to read this. I had to force myself to read it because it was all in like corporate speak. And I was just, this is absolutely terrible. Nobody's going to read this thing. One of the things that I had to tell her is like one, two pages is too long. She said that she knew that. She said that from her boss, the bosses said, after I said that two pages is too long, it should be one page. She said that, yeah, you're right. Because my boss said that I should come up with a proposal that's one page. And I was like, exactly. And she's just like, yeah, but it's so difficult to come up to condense all of this to one page. It's so important that they know all these things. It's like, this is so important to me. This is the most important thing in my life right now. And I was, yeah, I completely hear you. And I agree with you that it is the most important thing in your life right now. You still got to keep it to one page because nobody's going to read what it is. It's, and it's my opinion that the reason why we write something is so that other people read it. And it could just be you in the future, or like that's my opinion. I don't know if that's true. I think that we write so that later on someone will be able or would want to read it. And if that's the case, then we should make it readable for these people. How can they know your argument if they don't even read it? How can they know your argument if they look at it and they're like, this is crap. Like, I'm not going to read this thing. This is huge. So long story short, keep it to one page. Another thing that I was telling her is that schools. She went to college and she graduated. She was a communications major, right? And like I'm using air quotes here because she was obviously terrible at communicating or at least in the written form. The way that schools teach you to write is terrible. They teach you like, okay, you need to write an essay. You need to write six paragraphs. Each paragraph needs to have four to seven sentences and have 10 to 20 words in it, something like that. And then each paragraph is just a block of text this big. And then the next paragraph is a block of text this big. And then you have one idea in the first paragraph. You have one idea in the second paragraph. You have one idea in the third paragraph. Or what's even worse, and if you've gone to school, even high school teaches you how to do this, you know what I'm talking about. It's even worse is the five paragraph essay. It's like the intro paragraph. This is what I'm going to be talking about. Then you have your first point, you have your second point, you have your third point, and then you have your summary paragraph. Like that's an actually terrible, terrible way to write. And I didn't find this out until recently, like within the past four years, I didn't figure this out. And just because I have to write so much for a living now, I have to write a lot to make these episodes and I have to write a lot to get people to do things, like to get people to buy things. I have to write a lot to communicate ideas to people. I have to write a lot to make sure that they understand what I'm saying. Well, it wasn't until recently that I figured this out and I told her, I was like, hey, we've got to shorten this up. We have to do a bunch of things here. We have to shorten it up. We have to give the readers a little bit more space to breathe. Like white space is good on a paper. Even if you don't change anything, you don't delete any words, which I suggested that she did. I suggested that she delete most of it. You can just go to the end of one of those sentences within the four to seven sentences and you just press enter. And that little breathing room makes it so much more readable and makes it so much easier for somebody to understand your point because they're actually going to read the document.